Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our eighth lesson on meteorology. We're going to discuss surface-based layers, or in other words, fog and mist. Let's start off with uh, fog formation. So fog is a surface-based cloud layer. It's composed of water droplets or ice crystals. So if you think of stratus clouds, but now these stratus clouds are touching the ground, we call that fog. The ideal conditions for fog formation are a small temperature dew point spread, an abundance of condensation nuclei, very light surface winds, and a cooling land surface with warmer air above. So that would be a, an inversion, very stable air. There are a number of different fog types. Uh, let's start off with radiation fog. It's the most common fog in uh, most of the continental air masses in Canada. So we have cold or we have clear nights and uh, the clear nights the temperature dew point spread is very narrow as the earth cools down from the radiation escaping from the ground and escaping the atmosphere the earth's surface cools to the dew point the water vapor now condenses into water droplets close to the surface and fog forms Typically, this type of fog is heavy. The fog that you'll have first thing in the morning, six, seven o'clock in the morning, by nine or 10 o'clock in the morning, the fog has dissipated because of daytime heating. Secondly, we have advection fog. This is most common in the maritimes. This occurs when warm, moist air blows over a cooler surface. So with advection fog, you have kind of the rare phenomenon of very bad visibility and strong winds. So the warm, moist air over the ocean is blown over the land, over the cool land. And uh, when it hits the cool land, the, that air uh, or the water vapor condenses, forming advection fog. This type of fog may last for days, it could be a week, uh, and it doesn't let up. Upslope fog is really the same as a stratus type cloud, just at higher elevation. Remember, we talked about orographic lift, air being blown up a surface, so upslope fog. The wind pushes the moist air up the slope, and as it pushes it up the slope, it cools or it expands, then cools and condenses. This creates fog at higher elevations. Next, we have precipitation induced fog. Sometimes the air and uh, as high relative humidity, it starts to rain. And then as this rain falls, it evaporates, raising the localized relative humidity. And uh, once it hits 100%, then the, the uh, water vapor will then condense again and form water droplets. And so you'll end up with fog in the vicinity of precipitation. Lastly, we have ice fog. Uh, this occurs in very cold uh, northern climates when you have burning jet fuel actually i should say any any type of hydrocarbon fuel a byproduct of that hydrocarbon uh, burning is water vapor the uh, water vapor adds uh, and saturates the air remember the air is so cold it cannot uh, uh, it has very little Water uh, bearing capacity can't hold much moisture in the air. And so when we add just a little bit from the burning uh, fuel, we end up saturating the air causing fog. This is not the same though as freezing fog. Freezing fog is another type of fog that occurs when it's below zero. It can be radiation fog in which will cause icing. We'll discuss that in a subsequent lecture. There are some other uh, surface-based layers that you need to be aware of. There's smoke, usually from forest fires. We can have haze caused uh, from dust, smoke, and other dry particulates that obscure the visibility. And lastly, we have mist. So mist is very similar to fog, but the visibility is greater than five-eighths of a mile. So same mechanisms. Sometimes people will look outside and be like, oh, it's foggy out, but the visibility is, let's say, three quarters of a mile. And yeah, I guess you could say it's foggy. It's the same mechanism. But uh, from an aviation point of view, we refer to that as mist. We can have blowing obstructions to visibility, such as blowing snow in Canada or in desert regions, dust or sand. Uh, that will obstruct uh, the visibility. Typically, blowing obstructions are very, uh, they're not very thick layers. You might have very 
good visibility above the blowing snow. It might be clear above, um, but the 20 feet uh, above the surface, the visibility is uh, very low, let's say half a mile in blowing snow, even though the weather is quite nice above it. Fog occurs when the temperature reaches uh, the dew point. Radiation fog occurs on cold, clear nights where the uh, heat from the earth radiates out into space. Advection fog occurs in the maritimes where more moist air from the ocean blows over the cold land. We have strong winds and can last days at a time. Upslope fog is essentially a cloud, but the terrain is at higher elevations. Mist is similar to fog but there's better visibility. So five eighths of a mile or better, we call that mist. The temperature is 10 degrees Celsius, the dew point is nine. It is a clear night, ideal for night flight. What weather hazards can you expect? So remember the temperature dew point spread is quite narrow. It's only one degree and it's a clear night. So we know that the Earth's heat will radiate out. So the temperature will drop. Well, what happens when the temperature hits nine degrees and the dew point's nine degrees. Well, the air will be saturated and the water vapor will condense. So we will end up with uh, radiation fog. So let's go through here. Nocturnal thunderstorms, well, no, that's not the, the greatest hazard. Radiation fog caused by the addition of moisture. Nope, there's no addition of moisture. Um, radiation cause, fog caused by the cooling of the atmosphere to the dew point. So that's the correct answer. And advection fog, no, that's not correct. Uh, that's what happens kind of over maritime regions with strong winds. What is one primary difference between radiation fog and advection fog? A, radiation fog occurs in close to calm winds, whereas advection fog occurs with strong winds. So that is correct. Uh, radiation fog is just uh, very, very light winds, one or two knots, just to kind of stir things up a bit. Advection fog requires a significant wind to blow uh, the warm, moist air over the land. So that's correct. B, advection fog occurs in close to calm winds, whereas radiation fog occurs with strong winds. No, it's not correct. C, radiation fog occurs at night only, whereas advection fog occurs during the day only. So this is kind of partially right, it's, but it's, it's not the most correct answer. Radiation fog um, can occur during the day if you have more uh, cooling, let's say early in the morning. Uh, but it is rare. And advection fog doesn't occur only during the day. It can it can be day and night. So C is not correct. D, radiation fog occurs by raising the dew point to the temperature, whereas advection fog is caused by lowering the temperature to the dew point. Uh, so that's not correct either. So correct answer is A, radiation fog occurs in close to calm winds, whereas advection fog occurs with strong winds. So here's a bit of a tricky uh, question. When is ice fog most likely to occur? So if we recall, ice fog occurs uh, in very cold climates uh, where we add water vapor caused by the burning of hydrocarbons. So when is it most likely to occur? A, on cold, clear nights. So normally cold, clear nights, that's what we associate with radiation fog, but let's work our way through it. B, on warm summer days. So no, definitely not. Uh, we would not be producing enough adding enough water vapor from the burning of hydrocarbons. So B is not correct. C, near the ocean. So that's usually associated with advection fog, but it's not likely to occur near the ocean because near the ocean, we generally have warmer temperatures on, it, on the grand scheme of things. D, at higher elevations. That's somewhat irrelevant uh, to the question if it's at high or low elevation. So we kind of have four bad answers, but which one is the most correct? The most correct would be A on cold, clear night, because the other ones are obviously wrong. But on cold, clear nights, yeah, that's that would be when it's most likely to occur. Uh, cold, clear nights and, and very they'd be very very cold. So that concludes this lesson on surface plate la uh, layers fog. Uh, thanks for joining us. We'll see you on our next lesson.